Hi, my name is Robin Miller. I'm the host of Miller Chat. My guest today is Bettina Zumdek, a um, macrobiotic educator and owner of the Culinary Medicine School. Bettina has uh, studied food science, dietetics, and nutrition at the Wilhelm University of Munster in Germany. That is correct. Hello, Robin. Welcome back to my show. Thank you. So today we're going to talk about uh, brain health and healthy memories. Is that correct? That is correct. All right, so just to uh, review and refresh a little bit, why don't you tell the viewers what you do at your institute? Well, what I do is I am teaching about culinary medicine or food as medicine. And that is something that is really dear to my heart because food as medicine can have a big impact on our health as scientific studies show more and more, not only our brain health, but our health as a whole, the whole body. We can use diet, we can use food to have an impact on how we feel. And then that means we don't get ill so much mm -hmm. uh, or we recover more easily and we experience more joy in our life, basically. Well, it's a good time as any, as consumers and uh, are becoming more conscious about how to be healthy and stay healthy without relying on traditional medicines. Um, it's an opportunity for people to learn what are alternatives to stay healthy and be healthy. So we're going to talk about you know, brain health and healthy memories. What, what exactly does that mean, brain health? Well, brain health, I mean, uh, there are many things, but I mean, to measure it in terms of regular dynamics, I would say measuring it by mm, how we live, generally living stress-free, being mm -hmm. able to experience joy. And this incl includes also having a stable mood, having a healthy memory, being able to remember names, etc., whenever you wish to, being able to focus either on your work on, or other pursuits of your personal interest so that you get get things done as opposed to, you know, having brain fog, um, mm. being emotionally uh, tossed from pillar to post, uh, being scattered, depressed, uh, stressed, you know, all of these indicate that brain health then is not functioning as well and of course the health of the body as a whole is impacted also. Brain fog means? Brain fog, suddenly, you know, either you can't focus or you, you just can't see the greater picture. You just can't remember names. You can't put it together. I mean, it, everything seems to be really hard and you're dragging along and uh, even like following a cooking recipe may be difficult sometimes because of what I would consider brain fog. It's like Actually, I visualize it as actual a brain fog on top, a big, big, big cloud hanging over you, hanging head. over you with the fog underneath it. And it can either be clear or it could be thick. Right? I guess right. it all depends. Right. Um, it's just just a, uh, an example how to explain it to the viewers out there that are listening today. Um, what do consumers need to know about bad foods for the brain? What exactly does that mean? Well. What I'm going to talk about uh, a little later also is about key foods that help prevent toxins from being absorbed into our brain and um, not only toxins but certain foods have uh, certain chemical reactions if you wish or biological reactions in the body in the brain function that then allow the brain not to function as healthily as it can. Now, these days, of course, there's a lot of vilifying of grains going on, mm. um, grain belly, wheat belly. Now, I don't believe that vilifying grains is the answer for brain health. However, there are different kinds of grains and different kinds of what I call carbohydrates. Now, white flour products, they act like sugar in the body mm -hmm. and sugar mm -hmm. and white flour products do not help our brain. However, when we're talking about whole grains like brown rice, like quinoa, like millet, when they are soaked and cooked and then consumed, actually they burn cleanly in the body and they really, really do help the brain function keep uh, an even level of energy. And that's very important for the brain function because 
Considering that our brain is only one twentieth of our body weight, so about five percent of our body weight on average, mm -hmm. but when the body is at rest, we're lying down, we're relaxing, the brain consumes twenty percent of the energy uh, calories. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. And we have to see it this way. Mm, the brain is always on. The brain, you know, regulates our breathing, mm -hmm. our heart rate, our yammer, yammer, the mm -hmm. thoughts that are going constantly. Even while we're sleeping, the brain is always working. So it needs a constant supply of fuel. And whole grains, which are absorbed slowly, and when they are, as I said, prepared properly, soaking and cooking, then um, they can give us this even level of energy that allows a constant fuel uh, supply. Of course, not when we're um, fasting for a long time. So that's a completely different story. But it can really help us to um, give the right kind of fuel to the brain because the brain function and all other cells as well run on um, carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. But again, what choice of carbohydrates we use can make a difference on whether in our brain we view life as an opportunity mm -hmm. and an exciting challenge or whether we view life as a threat. And let me explain that just a little bit more if you don't mind. Sure, go ahead. Um, we, our brain mm, has many different functions, of course, we all know that, but there is a part that is called the hippocampus in the brain. This part is a part deep within the brain that acts like a distribution center. This distribution center um, brings energy uh, or information, incoming information from within or without the body to the front of the brain for solution-oriented mm -hmm. thinking, for um, your think tank, basically, or when the hippocampus perceives a threat, the information goes to an older part of the brain that is called the amygdala, which is an instinctual part of the brain that is important for fight or flight. When the tiger is chasing mm -hmm. you, you need to run. Perfect. Now, in our world, through toxins, through pesticides, through too many sugars, too much animal food, which all can cause this kind of um, same um, experience, what can happen is that the hippocampus slowly begins to break down. And when the hippocampus itself is breaking down because of toxins or these other factors that I mentioned, what happens is that all the information gets routed through fight or flight. And that means the amygdala is calling for stress hormones to re mm -hmm. be released. Mm -hmm. Then the body is, you know, <gasps> feeling in constant mm -hmm. stress. And of course, constant release of cortisol and other stress mm -hmm. hormones is also lowering our immune function, increasing uh, inflammatory substances, the inflammatory substances that mm, float around in our system, then produce more chemicals in the brain that are anxiety producing that lead to more depression yeah. and so it's a vicious cycle that is really really difficult so we want foods that strengthen the brain the hippocampus so that we can because MRI scans have clearly shown that when the front of the brain is active on a regular ba basis these people lead healthy, happy, mm -hmm. fulfilled lives. So we want that. We want the front of the brain to become active and right. not everything routed through these old um, dynamics, the instinctual parts that only lead us to experience the same old problems, uh, hoping for a different outcome. <laughs> well, I, I guess, uh, you know, there's people on the community researchers who've taken brain scans and they show, like, if you have brain damage or brain uh, fu uh, function when they're not, uh, the brain functioning is, is like has holes in the brain, so to speak. It shows that the brain is not functioning in a normal way. There's some brain flow issues. So that's basically what you're talking, how to increase better brain, fl uh, brain flow to the uh, part of the brain. Well, that's the frontal lobe. 
So let me also talk a little bit about some um, other foods that mm -hmm. are very helpful. So I talked about uh, whole grains, mm -hmm. and really I'm not talking about white flour products mm -hmm. or things like that, but the whole grains. But then, of course, uh, some other foods. Generally, I, I would recommend more of a plant-based diet okay. and more whole, less processed, and preferably also more organic and locally grown in terms of vegetables or fruits. Mm -hmm. But there are other foods, I mean, especially also leafy greens. Leafy greens are something that are, I, I believe, highly important for brain function because the nervous system is also working by um, minerals, uh, the incoming outgoing signals mm -hmm. for the uh, in between the brain and outside of the going outside of the brain um, rely on minerals and so leafy greens provide those but also leafy greens of course have a highly detoxifying effect. Mm -hmm. They also strengthen our lungs and of course if we don't have enough oxygen in our system right. then the brain doesn't function then we also feel like brain fog. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, then I also, so detoxifying effect of leafy greens also because of their high fiber mm -hmm. they clean out help clean out the gut and it is also studies are becoming more and more clear how gut and brain are related through the vagus nerve and within you know seconds the information from the gut goes to the brain or vice versa. So eating sugar, you know, and starting inflammation in the gut, that immediately goes to the brain and makes us feel unstable. Whereas it can, of course, go the other way. You are maybe nervous mm -hmm. of talking in front of a large group. Mm -hmm. And you get really yeah. nervous, nervous, and then that has an effect on the gut, and suddenly we have to have a bowel movement, mm -hmm. <laughs> something like this. So, I mean, it goes both ways, but so leafy greens, very stabilizing, and also very, very important for brain function in terms of foods are fermented foods. And I would primarily suggest fermented foods from vegetables, mm -hmm. like sauerkraut, like kimchi, um, like your naturally fermented pickles. Mm -hmm. These kind of foods establish the right kind of intestinal flora and that is really, really in, uh, helpful and uh, important to then mitigate negative effects and make digestion more um, well, regulated mm -hmm. and beneficial and that helps the brain also. Mm -hmm. And another factor, of course, the brain is also consisting of a lot of fat. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So we need omega-3 and 6 fatty acids. And of course, um, they can come from knee seeds and nuts. They can come from grains, beans, also sardines, some vegetables like cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, winter squash, those also contain good qualities mm -hmm. and vast uh, amounts of omega-3 and 6 fatty acids. That's very important. And another food that I would highly recommend if you haven't already considered it ever, but I would ask you to consider it, are sea vegetables. Now, okay. sea vegetables, like harvested from Maine or harvested mm -hmm. in Iceland, sea vegetables also really, really wonderful because more than even leafy greens, they have the ability to really repair the brain, um, the repair the hippocampus when we feel, you know, we are way stressed all the time and right. we can not step out of that dynamic of flight or flight and feeling always every, everywhere is a challenge and a threat in our life. So eating sea vegetables can really help to repair it so that eventually we can have some information right. going to the front of the brain. Because sea vegetables, of course, first of all also they are high in minerals. And in fact, most land vegetables, I believe, are lacking the amount of trace minerals that the body needs these days. And sea vegetables can provide that and are a natural source, not rock source, uh, etc., but in a natural plant form. Um, what do you mean by sea vegetable? Okay, I mean by sea vegetables, well, uh, plants, 
vegetables or plants that grow in the ocean. Oh, in the ocean. Okay. In okay. The ocean. Oh, you're meaning fee, like fee, F-E-A. Yes. Okay. I thought you meant fee, like the letter fee. Okay. I mean like fee. sea Water. in the ocean, yes. Okay. So sea vegetables or um, ocean vegetables. Mm -hmm. But they also, um, so they are highly detoxifying. In fact, m they can take out pesticides. They can take out even radioactive materials that may be stuck in our bodies, heavy metals, which, you know, are mm -hmm. in our drinking waters, um, antibiotics, which may be in our drinking water and traces, etc. So um, sea vegetables are highly, mm -hmm. highly proficient in that also they are mitigating inflammation that may be happening anywhere in the body. So um, I would really, really recommend sea vegetables, even in just tiny quantities. There are sea vegetables that are called uh, alaria, like mm -hmm. uh, it is um, uh, delicate sea vegetables that is growing like in Maine on the seashore um, that can be very, very helpful. But many other sea vegetables as well. Like seaweed? Seaweed. Mm -hmm. Call it seaweed. Yeah, like you can get sushi? You can get sushi. Of course, most sushi has sugared rice and mm -hmm. who well knows what else, but uh, the seaweed on the outside, that uh, thin black um, I've had it. Sheet, it, it I, I have to say it's it's chewy, but it's it's delicious. It can be. I, I, if I ever eat it, I don't have the fish in it. I try to just have the vegetables, uh, the carrots, and the yeah. But yeah, I see them a lot in in the health food places. Okay, urchins. Um, that's okay, um, as long as they are harvested in clean areas. You know, with uh, in in general with seafood, um, I would say. Um, be careful where it's harvested and uh, with seafood that is sitting on the ground and not moving as much, mm -hmm. you know, that can accumulate a lot of heavy metals. Mm. So there is a little bit of a problem with that because heavy metals in conjunction with a lot of animal food eating um, and a lot of sugars, but especially animal food eating and heavy metals contribute to the Alzheimer's problems with the tau mm. tangles and the amyloid plug in the brain mm. and you know trying to avoid that is right more elegant <laughs> so you found people who eat those healthy foods that you serve um, um, how long would it how long is it what's the turnaround time for somebody to improve to improve yeah what have you seen well, I would say four months. Mm -hmm. uh, changing your diet for four months can make a huge difference. Okay. And you can see in uh, also tests and tests that you're taking, you can see tremendous differences. And there are foods also, of course, aside from sea vegetables like um, cilantro, which can be taken on an everyday basis, which also helps to take out heavy metals. Mm -hmm. You take mm. them on an everyday basis, a tablespoon every day, and you have yourself retested three, four months later. The test shows a huge difference. And chia seeds? Chia seeds are also helpful. Um, they are a good quality protein, and um, they help to clean out the gut, which is very important. Mm -hmm. So they can be uh, another factor. Also, um, blueberries, uh, red grapes uh, in moderation uh, yeah, because right. they have simple sugars also, mm -hmm. but they have uh, antioxidants that are called the uh, resveratrol and pterostilbene. I don't need to know these <laughs> names, but um, they are very healthy and protective brain agents. Now, another thing, actually two other things. Whole grains uh, also contain the wonderful antioxidants that are in turmeric. But again, if you just cook the whole grains without soaking them overnight first, you don't have access to these. Mm -hmm. But if you do soak them, they have the same beneficial effect as turmeric, and they are these um, antioxidants are really vital mm -hmm. then. And the other one I was going to talk about 
just disappeared on me, <laughs> bright <and> fog. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, like I said, it, you know, your website um, that you have, the uh, com has a wealth of information for readers to really learn about what you do in terms of the, uh, the different cooking classes, you know, from cancer to chronic pain, correct? And, um, you know, um, you're promoting healthy foods and you talk about what are the healthy foods. So you have a very an informative website that viewers can go and learn a lot um, of different things. Um, Regarding um, chronic pain, can you just say one or two foods that help reduce inflammation? Well, again, with chronic pain, I would say reducing in general um, animal foods and sugar is an important factor. And then it depends on what kind of chronic pain we're talking about. If it's chronic pain in the bones, then I would suggest eating more leafy greens. Mm -hmm. If it's chronic pain, let's say um, fibromyalgia, something like this, um, then perhaps um, more sea vegetables might be needed or um, root vegetables like burdock would mm -hmm. be very strengthening. Mm -hmm. um, so it depends on where, I'm always looking at it also from the uh, Chinese medicine perspective okay. and uh, understanding where the chronic pain is will also give us a clue on what um, problems are involved in <clears throat> in the body mm -hmm. and how to address its healing because while chronic pain well can be chronic pain but the expression of it where it is then we have to address it differently I mean, obviously, if you have a headache, you take a different medicine than, in most cases, than if you have a bellyache. So, but um, again, starting with reducing sugars and animal excess animal foods, right. that will already make a difference. Well, I guess people can try it, and they notice they feel better after a couple of weeks. But I, I find a lot of, not a lot, it sounds like people want that quick fix. Yes, of course. Mm. That is always the case. Yeah. People want the quick fix. And the quick fix is not working so well because usually when you just take, uh, when you have headaches and you constantly take the aspirin or something to, or the, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Tylenol. Tylenol to take care of the headache. Mm. That can cause other problems yep. in the long run. And so we're ending up with disappearing the symptom, but not the cause of the symptom. So what we're trying to do mm -hmm. is erasing the cause of the, the symptom, which means we may have to apply ourselves a little bit more regularly and steadily, but then the overall benefit, the quality of life improves so much right. that once you've done it for a while, and yes, initially, oh, now <laughs> I have to do this, and mm -hmm. I have to do this, and you know, mm -hmm. plus, 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 but um, once your quality of life has improved so much, you probably don't want to go back. That is always yes, the experience that's what true. we have uh, with that's people. True. Relapse. You always have relapse um, for whatever reason. I mean, I know from giving my class an assignment on, on grocery shopping that if you take off, you know, 20, it may not hurt, but if you take off $50 a week of your shopping bill, it can impact what you get because healthy foods, just, just, just face it, it's, it's expensive. Unfortunately, that is the case. So, of course, if you have a little plot where you can plant some of your own, mm -hmm. like leafy greens, which are growing easily, and you know, uh, that can already make a difference in the summertime in the grocery bill. And then, of course, also looking around where things might be a little bit less expensive or what community programs there are available so that um, things can become easier and mm -hmm. not as expensive, that makes a difference too. And also uh, prioritizing your budget. Well, I agree uh, with that. It's sometimes those little um, unhealthy habits, whatever that may be. Well, we have less than three minutes, so what else would you like to share in the less than, uh, we have less than three minutes to, to talk? 
All right. Um, I would like to let you know that on, if you wish to have more information on brain health in particular, there's a lot more information that I have available. Uh, you can join me for a webinar on April 12th from 7 to 9 Eastern Standard Time. You can see it on my website, www.culinarymedicineschool.com. And there are also a lot of other webinars, cooking classes, and uh, shows that I share with people, so, um, as well as doing consultations. So let me um, put a plug in for that. Yes, and um, in the time we have, can you, and it's less than two minutes, do you have like a testimony of anybody who's come and life has gotten better for them? Can you think of one? I mean, no, you don't have to say names. Well, in, in fact, uh, I just uh, received, uh, I, I get wonderful testimonies every, you know, all the time. But just uh, the other day, I received a letter from somebody who I had the first time seen 13 years ago, a woman with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has uh, really, you know, I've seen her in the beginning probably every three months for a while and then maybe every once a year for another four years or so. But um, then she was really so much better. She doesn't have, uh, didn't have a relapse of breast cancer and she just wanted to let me know that she's doing really excellent and that she's so happy about the change in her life. Mm -hmm. It has impacted her whole family. Everybody is doing better and um, yeah, life is good. I'm always happy to hear these kind of stories, but um, many times even in the short run, um, Lyme disease even, which I had myself, can be changed, even chronic Lyme disease. If you wish to change it, you know, change your diet, that's an important factor. Well, well I thank uh, Bettina Zumdeck, um, owner of the Culinary Medicine School, for coming on my show today to talk about brain health and healthy memories. If you want more information, her website is www.culinarymedicineschool.com, and you're located in Western Mass? In Lee, Massachusetts, Western Mass, yes. Well, it goes with it with promoting healthy foods, healthy bodies, and healthy memories. You're in the heart of Massachusetts, Western Mass. All right, I'm Robin Miller of Millichek. Good night. <laughs>